ironically, you know, the book, the, the Boko Haram's name means Western education is forbidden. And that goes back to the central part of the group's message at, the, at its initial stage, which is to say, you know, they, they preached that Western education was a sin, was forbidden, people shouldn't uh, go to school or go to the secular schools. Uh, not only Western education, but everything associated with it. So modernity, so secular government, so parties, so engineering, and uh, all kinds of modern technologies associated with it. Uh, they actually see society as being corrupted by these influences. So, so as a solution, ironically, one of the things that would solve the problem is precisely the thing that Boko Haram condemns, which is Western education, which is to expand access to Western education. The United States government, given its clouds, in the international community can put more pressure on the Nigerian government to do more because the government was slow to react to this, uh, to this incident uh, uh, without the international pressure through the social media campaign, the Bring Back Our Girls media campaign. Uh, the Nigerian government would not have acted, I, I, I suspect, to, bring those, to try to bring those girls back, to try to rescue them. Uh, actually, they were shamed into doing something. So I think the United States can play the role of, you know, uh, putting pressure on the Nigerian government, causing them to do more, but also working with international partners as well to help the Nigerian government to actually optimize its effort uh, in this fight against Boko Haram. Ultimately, one has to combine the military effort with those kinds of, uh, with, with what I call social engineering. You have to re-engineer the social environment in that entire area. You have to increase access to Western education, you have to create jobs, you have to create social safety nets for people as well, especially for youth. Uh, these are the people who are being recruited into these organizations. Uh, these are the people who feel disenfranchised economically. And so Boko Haram offers them not only a way out of their predicament, but also gives them a sense of power and relevance. And so you have to begin to find a way, invest massively in this youth to keep them engaged and keep them away from these radicals. You also, I think, in my opinion, have to invest, uh, while the military effort is going on, you have to invest in moderate Islamic education because there is radicalization that is going on. For too long, groups like Boko Haram uh, have been allowed to you know, preach their extreme doctrines unchallenged by the Northern Nigerian Muslim mainstream. So I do think the government needs to regulate, maybe regulate preaching. Some states in northern Nigeria are beginning to do that, where you have to have a license to preach, and what you preach is monitored, what you preach in mosque, in your mosque is monitored. But also you have to invest in moderate Islamic education, uh, because a lot of experts, including myself on northern Nigeria, believe that most of these youth who are, being, who are fighting on the side of Boko Haram uh, do not have sound Islamic education. So it's easy for them to buy into a distorted version of the Islamic message. The idea that if you, if you get killed in jihad, you go to heaven. The idea that you can kill children who go to school legitimately, children who are in school. You can kill teachers and, and principals in school. You can massacre people as long as you, know, it's, you do it in the name of jihad. The idea that if you kill a fellow Muslim in the course of so-called jihad, violent jihad, you act, you're actually helping them to go to heaven. That contradicts uh, the mainstream foundational message of Islam that people in Northern and most, most Muslims in Northern Nigeria subscribe to. So I think that, that you have to invest in people who, are, who promote those kinds of moderate Islamic messages to counter the influence of the radicals.